Have you ever wished you could send an email notification directly from Google Sheets when you select a particular dropdown? Today we're going to show you how to do that and grab data from that row and send it as an email notification directly to their inbox. All right, so let's jump right in. Let's go ahead and create the app script here. And then basically we need to do three things. So first of all, we need to determine when this dropdown was selected. So let's go ahead and clear that out for now. And then we need to grab the data from that row and then we need to send an email to that email address. So the way we're going to track whether a status was selected is using what's called an on edit trigger. So let's go ahead and just name this project. We'll call it script or you can call it email script, whatever you like there. And then the native on edit function for the simple trigger is on edit with an E for the event object containing data about what was edited. However, this is only going to work for whoever authorizes this. So if you want this to work for anyone, we're just going to name this something else. It doesn't really matter. Maybe we can call it check my sheet. And then I'll show you how to install a trigger for that here in a couple minutes. So let's go ahead and get some data about what was edited. So the trigger is basically meaning the function is going to run anytime the Google Sheet is changed. And so then this E is going to contain data about what was changed. So let's go ahead and start this off by getting the range that was edited. And so we do this by doing E dot range. And so that dot notation is how we get stuff out of that object. So we can also get the source sheet that was edited. And then we do this through E dot source. And then we can do get active sheet. And so now we have the range that was edited as well as the sheet or the tab. And so let's just get a couple more things here and then we'll get rolling on the next part. So let's get the row that was edited. And so we have the range here. And so let's do range dot get row, then column, range dot get column. And finally, let's get the value, range dot get value. So now we have the row that was modified, the column, the value that was entered, and the sheet that was on. So at this point, we can do an if statement to determine if we want to actually do something. So we do this by doing if and then parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, we'll do a condition, and then outside, we'll do these curly braces, and then what happens if it's true, we'll do this. So let's go ahead and do if, maybe you have multiple tabs, and so let's go ahead and just make sure it's only going to happen on this project management tab. If you do not need that, if you want it to be able to work on any tab, then you don't need this part. But we'll just do get name. And then to compare, we're going to use double equals. So the single equals means whatever is on the right will get assigned to the left. And so this will say whatever is in range.getValue will then get assigned to this variable called val. So for comparing an if statement, we want to make sure we use two of these or three if you want to do type as well, but we're not going to worry about that for the moment. And so let's go ahead and just do double quotes and project manage management. So we're saying if the tab is project management and then we need to do a couple other things. So first of all, we need to make sure it's in the status column. So that's column one, two, three, four. So we'll add a condition using this double ampersand. And so that's saying if this and this is true. So we'll do call is equal to four. And then let's do and value is equal to. And then let's do one for follow up. So we'll just type in follow up. And then so if all three of those conditions are true, then we want to proceed with the script. So let's go ahead now. If we're good to go, we'll go ahead and get the spreadsheet just doing this spreadsheet app get active spreadsheet and then let's get the tab here again so got a sheet by name and then we can just use this here and then let's go ahead and get the data from that row so that would be sheet dot get range and then we have that row and let's start column one do one row and how many columns one two three four five six uh, we don't need this one. Um, actually, we do. We need seven to get that email. So we're assuming that we're going to have that email in the same range. Otherwise, 
let's say if all the email notifications go go are going to go to a particular person, then we could do something like this. And we could say let email equals to email to send. Something like this. And we could use that down below. So you can put it in here if you want a manual one person email that everything goes to. Otherwise, you can just put different emails in each row and then we can use that to reference. So now we have the data from the row that we just changed. And so in this case, we change this to follow up. Once we have the trigger installed, then this will have the data from this row. So now we can go ahead and make a email using this data. So we have the email address in the last one. So we can do mail app. That's what we'll just use in this one. You can use Gmail or mail app, but we're gonna use mail app just because it doesn't need access to your Gmail then. So it's a little more secure. And then inside that we're using these curly braces and this just allows us to use this method. So we can do data and this would be six. So one thing to note, it's a little weird, but when you do these arrays, you would think this would be number seven because we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven columns, but in an array notation, it starts at zero and goes up from there. So instead of starting at one, like you normally count, this is start at zero. So whenever you're referencing something inside array, just make sure you do the offset from what the column number is. Then we can do a subject and we'll do that colon there. And then I'm gonna use a back tick so we can do some custom text in here. So this is opposed to doing single quotes or double quotes. The back tick is above the tab key on my keyboard. And so just look around, it's usually where the tilde is. And the tilde is this curly here. So we're gonna use that. Let's go ahead and get our HTML body one ready to go as well. And then this is all the points we're gonna use. So we have our two, which is gonna be our email address. And then we're gonna create a subject. And so let's call this one follow-up needed for, and let's just put that project in there. So we'll just put in follow up needed for, and to get that project, we're gonna use what's called temperate literal. So you can do that whenever you use these back ticks, then you can use dollar sign, curly brace, and another curly brace. And then inside this, we can use this kind of notation here. Uh, but we don't want the email, we want the first one. And so if you remember, that's offset. So instead of one, that's gonna be zero. And so this will be our project name. Now on our HTML body, let's go ahead and just make some new lines just for this to make it easier. And then let's grab our headers here. We won't need a sign to, let's just go through notes. And then let's just copy that in. Maybe make some new lines here. And then let's go ahead and format this and add our actual data. So that way we're good to go. So for formatting, I'm just gonna put some bolding around these and in HTML now, you use a strong to make that text bold. So let's go ahead and just put that around all of our headers. And then this closing tag tells it to stop doing the bolding. And then we're gonna do a colon and then we're gonna use these template tags again to insert the rest of the data. So we can put this project in there like this, and then let's go ahead. Um, actually, let's do a new line as well. So a new line is this BR, or you could use paragraph tags if you prefer, but we'll just use that BR for new line. And so this will put each one of these on its own line in the email. So start date is gonna be the next one, followed by do, and so I'm just gonna increment these by one for each column. And so now at notes, we're at data five. And so if you remember, so this would be in the array, this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So notes would be five in this array notation. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and add a few extra things before we set the trigger. So let's go ahead and just add a little note um, that the email got sent. If you notice, there was a little pop-up. And so the way we do this is we have the spreadsheet here. And so the notation for this is toast. And so we can put a message in here. So we can just say email successfully sent. And then we can just leave it like that or we can add maybe something like status and we can put time in there in seconds. So we do five seconds, one second, 
If you negative one, it'll stay there until they exit out. Um, let's just do five for now, that should be good. And then at this point, we should be ready to authorize and then add our trigger and then we can test it out. So let's go ahead and authorize it. We'll just do it from here. So we'll just click run. And this isn't, it's gonna result in error, but we're just gonna do this to get our authorized decision done. So review permissions, choose our Gmail account, and then Google does this every time you access any kind of information, just to make sure you know what you're doing uh, because Google did not do the script. But obviously if you did the script, then you're gonna be fine. And so to go to advanced, go to email script, and then this is permissions it is asking for. So send emails you and then access your Google Sheets and that's so it can access that Google Sheet. So we'll click allow. And then here we have this error and that's because normally this runs from the sheet and in that case, this E would contain data about what was edited, but because we ran it from here, it's not actually being triggered from uh, update in here. And so that's why we have the error. So that error is perfectly normal. And so let's go ahead and add a trigger. And what this trigger is gonna do is it's then gonna start watching that Google Sheet for changes and it'll make our script run. So here's our check my sheet function. That's the one we did in uh, our script editor. And so if you named it something else, make sure you just select the correct one, especially if you have more than one. And then we'll go to on edit. So head from spreadsheet and then on edit and then click save. And we're about to wrap up here. So let's go ahead and here's the trigger. So if you ever need to get back to it, if you open up the script editor by going to extensions app script, it'll pop in here. If you ever need to remove that, just click here on the clock icon and triggers. And then you can delete it over here by the three dots and click delete trigger. Other than that, we are good to test this out. So let's go ahead and go over here. And we're gonna do this row here and we'll check our email. So there's a security alert. Google just sends you that whenever you authorize a script. So let's go ahead and delete that so we're ready to go. And then let's go ahead and select follow up and watch our email. So there's our little toast. And if we go over here, there is our follow up email. So if that's all you needed, you can log off now. So for the rest of the video, let's look at doing a couple quick tweaks. So if you notice, this does not look exactly the same as this. And the reason being is because this is a date object. And so it's just coming through as that. So we're gonna look at some formatting for that. And then the last thing we'll wrap up with is how to implement multiple. Let's say you want to do one for follow-up and a different one for ready to start. So that's how we're gonna finish up on this video for today. And so first of all, let's look at formatting those dates. So we have start and due date. And so what we're gonna do is just use this function called utilities format date. And then let's make sure we put this inside of a new date. So Google, uh, the app script will convert it to a date. And then let's get a time zone. So we need a time zone. So let's just get it from the spreadsheet. And so we'll do ss.get spreadsheet time zone. And then finally, a date format. And so you can kind of look at this if you want to check different ones. We're just going to do a simple month date um, and then double digit year and then close this out. And then instead of typing this all again for the due date, I'm just going to copy this and modify it. So if you remember, we have data one here. This is data two. So after we paste this, we're just going to come back here and change this to two. And so we can go ahead and check it again from here. So to send this again, I'm just gonna clear this out and then let's go ahead and select follow up again. And there's a little toast and there we go. Now those dates are a lot more friendly. So finally, let's look at how to incorporate a different status dropdown. So if we wanna do ready to start, for example. Um, and so at the point, this point, if we change this or got rid of this, then like if we just got rid of this and it said any change in column four, which you could do if you want to get alert for any change, but then this part isn't really relevant. And so let's look at what it would take to change this. And so I'm going to use a way that's going to make it easy for you guys to easily use this across multiple conditions. So let's go ahead and get rid of this for now. 
And then what we're gonna do is inside of here, let's do our condition. So if value equals follow up. And then we can do that. And then what we're gonna do now is let's say we want a different one for complete or uh, what was our ready to start. We're just gonna copy this. And so this would be our follow up email. And so we can add a little note and you do that by doing two forward slashes. And then we will say follow up email. And then down here, let's see, it was ready to start. Let me go ahead and copy that text there. And then we'll call this our ready to start email. And so you can duplicate this for as many as you need. And so in this case, it's only gonna send an email if we select one of those. Otherwise, it's just gonna finish out with nothing. And so we'll be ready to start. And then we could say this project is ready to start. Just like that. So one thing right now is with this toast um, or this alert function, if we select something besides ready to start or follow up because this is outside. So if you kind of hover over these, you can kind of, it's a little challenging, but you can kind of tell if you follow back up, it's just from here. And so let me see if we can format it back in a little bit. So because this is just inside this, as long as the sheet is project management and the column is four, then this toast is going to run. So maybe what we wanna do is make sure that we have a way to determine if we want to display that toast. And so let's just do a very simple condition. Let's say email sent equals false. And you're like, wait, hold on, why are we doing false? And here's the reason why. If val equals follow up, let's go ahead and change it to true. And notice I'm not using this let, I'm not declaring the variable because I'm actually modifying it here. So I don't need to say let again. In fact, I don't want to or I'm gonna mess things up. So then down here, let's do email sent equals to true. And so what I'm doing is if the value is follow up, in which case I am sending email, right? Then I'm gonna change this to true. Or if it's ready to start, I'm gonna change it to true. And so now what I'm gonna do, instead of just run this toast anytime something was edited in that column, I'm gonna wrap this in another if statement. So we're just gonna say if email sent is equal to true. And then we can wrap this in those braces. And so now we're only gonna display this if email sent is equal to true. And this is convenient if you have multiple things going on here. Maybe you want to add other stuff in there. So now we're ready to test this next phase. And so this will about wrap it up, make sure we're saved. And then let's go ahead and delete these both and then we'll just check out what it looks like. So no emails right now. And so let's see what happens. Let's change this one to ready to start. And there we go, showed up successfully. Perfect, it has grass is ready to start. So it had the right email template. And then let's try this one, follow up. Make sure that's still working. Email successfully sent, and then follow up needed. So perfect, that one showed up correctly. And now let's just test something else. So we're going to delete this and then we're gonna select in progress again. And we're gonna make sure that the email doesn't get sent and we don't have that little alert toast notification. So nothing's happening. It finished loading. So it looks like we're all good to go. So that is it for today's video. I hope that helps you to see how you can set different conditions for sending emails and quickly customize and modify that. And make sure to check out my other video on how to do this with a checkbox. So it's very similar. We basically just change this to if value equals to true. And then it works that way. And make sure to check out my other videos on both Google Sheets and AppScript. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.